So I am back. Hi, everybody. My name's Michelle. I'm joined today with Samantha, and we're finishing up our feed of our penguins. And of course, little Miss Kate decided to come out. Come on, Kate. Now, Kate is uh, very tentative right now. Right now, the penguins are in their migration mode. That's a stare. He just got one. And what that means is that they're very tentative, and they don't know it's OK. She doesn't want to really be up here. And if you look straight up, there's a reason why. See that big shadow? That is the scary, scary seagull that comes to try to take their food from them. So they are extremely cautious about what they want. And I can't have them take it and run. You going to eat it? No. Nope. And that's because she will swoop down and tried to steal the fish. We've had our seagull try to take the fish right out of the penguin's mouth before, not succeed, but just the fact that they're getting that close, I really wanna make sure that our penguins are nice and safe, so I choose not to feed them if they are doing that. Now, like I was talking about before, you'll notice that there's three penguins that do not look like the rest of them, and that's because they are juveniles, and these juveniles were just hatched in May. We have three. Three, um, we have two females, one male, and what's nice about that is that they are uh, pretty great for our exhibit. We've had 10 offspring at our exhibit, and we have a total of 23, so we are doing quite well in that. Now, we try to get our penguins so they are nice and comfortable around all of us, and so we will bring in different people uh, every now and then. We have encounters that you can do with our penguins as well on Thursday, Friday, Saturday for an upcharge, but you need to go to the website to look that up. Now, some of the things that people often wonder about our penguins, what do we feed them? Well, they get a mixture of herring and capelin. Each bird is different. Some birds only eat herring, some only eat capelin. I am uh, the keeper of the bucket, so I pretty much know the preferences of all of our penguins. And I cater to each and every one of them, all 23 of them. And I need to remember things like Robbie only likes the herring to be given to him belly first. Uh, Whatever will only eat capelin, but she only wants them to give them to him back first. And these are all percu uh, little peculiar uh, things that each penguin has on their own. This is whatever coming up. She is 16 years old. She is our oldest penguin. Heidi is right here coming straight up for me. Are you going to eat this one now? There we go. So Heidi uh, just got a herring. What I'm telling Samantha this is I'm not just saying it for my own health. Uh, Samantha is keeping track of everything that the penguins are eating. And this is something that we put into our logs at the end of the day. And what we look for are trends. Uh, during migration, they're going to be eating a lot more because they're going to be swimming a lot more. And so they're utilizing a lot more energy. And different times during the year, they will either increase their food or decrease, depending on what is coming up. Now, Penguins go through different types of phases. Right now, they're in their migratory phase. So like I said before, they're going to be spending a lot more time in the water than on land. When they're getting ready to do their breeding, they spend a lot more time on land than in the water. This is Avery coming up. Come here, Avery. Now, again, I have to be careful because that seagull is just looking right down at me. I'm not his favorite person because I don't let him eat. Come on. Right. So like I said before, the uh, seagull knows it dropped, but I have to be quicker than the seagull. Sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not, but it's just something that uh, I keep in the back of my mind when I'm offering a fish to a particular bird. That was Patsy. Patsy is very common to try to take the fish and run. A lot of times she stumbles and the fish goes on the ground. Such is the life of a penguin. Well, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. We're going to get ready to do the pinniped show, which is right behind you. So I would like to say thank you all for coming to the aquarium because your admission does help us take care of all of our animals. So for myself, Samantha, and our 23 penguins, we hope you enjoy your day here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and we hope to see you again real soon.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the June Keys Penguin Habitat. My name, once again, is Michelle. I've been working with these penguins since we have penguins. Uh, the other uh, animals around here are our seagulls, our resident seagulls. Um, if you notice, the penguins aren't liking to come up. That's why I did a little bit of an earlier feed just uh, before the pinniped show, just to kind of throw them off. But I was going to see if the penguins wanted any more food. We'll see if they come up. Right now, the penguins are in their migratory phase, which simply means that they're going to be spending a lot more time in the water. And they are very aware of what's going on around them. And if they perceive a threat, threat being seagull or sound or bucket clanking, all of these different uh, types of things can make the penguin not want to come up on deck and go into a flight mode. And you'll see 23 penguins, or maybe 20 because the chicks aren't all that great at this yet, uh, start taking off. And that's normal for these animals at this time. You may see a couple come up, some of the youngsters. I think Fisher is looking to uh, come up. We may see some of the uh, youngsters coming up. Now, the big way that you can tell the difference between them, this is Fisher. Uh, the adult penguins, good boy, Fisher. The adult penguins have that double black band around them. Buddy, you got to eat that for me. Denied. Um, so if you notice, penguins swallow their food whole. Uh, that is normal for them. Another thing that I'm going to be doing, and if you notice, just that uh, seagull flying down sent all of them swimming. We keep track of all the food that our animals get. And that allows me to kind of see any type of trends that may be coming around. Uh, migratory time, they don't eat a lot. They actually want to spend a lot of time in the water. So they will come up really quickly, try to grab the fish. Depending on if the seagulls hang around, I may do a toss feed as well, meaning that I'll toss food in the water. But if the seagulls are around, I don't want to reinforce the seagulls for uh, staying around our deck. So it's one of those catch-22s. I can only do it if the seagulls are gone. And uh, that is actually a chick, the one up by the camera, uh, because you can tell by the way it's begging. Uh, most of the seagulls, it must have just gone through its molt so it doesn't have its chick feathers anymore, but it's still maintaining the, the sound of it. And that sound is telling the uh, adult or the parents he wants food. And so he is going to be doing that kind of chirping sound to me, thinking that that's going to get him some food. And sorry, buddy. I'm here to feed the penguins. Now, feeding the penguins, they get two different types of restaurant-quality food. They get a mixture of herring and capelin, and depending on the penguin is what it wants to eat. I will always offer them both types. Uh, sometimes they want one over the other. For the most part, each penguin has its own type of food that they like to keep eating. Uh, but sometimes it will change. So during breeding time, it can change. We have penguins that predominantly eat only herring, but during breeding time, they want capelin instead. So it all depends on the mood of the penguin. And I keep track of all this uh, in our log. So coming uh, when we get time to get into those different kind of seasons, I can make note of it and change our breakout. Right now, the penguins are getting about nine kilos of herring and about two kilos of capelin. And if you want to know how many pounds that is, multiply that number by 2.2, and that will get you how much of uh, poundage we feed our penguins every day. Now, sometimes they'll eat it all. Sometimes they won't. You notice I have a nice little plate of capelin here. Pretty much right now, the only penguin eating capelin is this one that's coming up. Her name is whatever. She is our oldest penguin, and she doesn't know if she wants to or not. Are you going to come up? Come on. I promise I'll keep the seagulls away. That's a no. Uh, like I said, we keep track of everything. She has already eaten quite a bit today. She's had about 20 capelin. And for that size of a penguin, that's pretty good. During her molt, when she's getting ready to molt, she can eat up to 50 capelin. Uh, this is a capelin. It's a smaller fish. 
This is a herring. Uh, it's a lot meatier, so they're not going to eat as many. This is Patsy coming up, but Patsy is one of the birds that are extremely uh, shy when it comes to the birds. So as long as up, and we have a seagull walking, so they just see the shadows and just see uh, prey. <laughs> um, these guys are prey items. Come on, Kate. Uh, the way that you can easily tell looking at an animal if it's a prey or predator is where their eyes are. Our eyes are in the front of our head. We are a predator. If you have eyes on the side of your head, most likely you are a prey species. So things like hoofstock and different things like that have eyes on the side of their heads. Now they're uh, really good at uh, spotting things in the water. They can, uh, they have something called counter shading. So if something is looking down upon them, uh, they blend into the ocean floor. If something's looking up, those white chests blend in with the sky above. And so it's a great way that they can try to camouflage themselves. Not only do predators have this, prey species also have it. So a predator that would have this is the orca. Uh, they have that counter shading so they can be stealth in their hunting. A lot of prey species have it, so they can be stealth in getting away. Now, one of the things that people often ask about feeding penguins, uh, how, what is it like? Well, if anybody has ever had a three-year-old, it's exactly like feeding a three-year-old. Sometimes they'll throw the food back at you. Sometimes they'll start screaming at you for even offering them that whatever. And sometimes they will just turn their heads away and walk. Um, I've had all of those things happen to me. Um, and just think of it. 23 times and they never grow out of it so uh i can get condolence cards later thank you very much one of the neat things about these penguins is uh, these are temperate penguins and that simply means that they like this weather just like we like this weather they're found in uh, south america and they don't mind the heat one thing that they do have is really cold water right off their coast. And so that cold water we mimic here, the water here is around 60 degrees. And so if they ever get too hot, they just pop into the water and cool off. Now coming right up here, this is Admiral Fancy Pants. Uh, he came with that name. Good boy. One of the things that we try to do is get these animals there's my pin, uh, kind of very calm around us. So when we have things like animal encounters that we have on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, they know that if they come up here, nothing is bad is going to happen to them. Now that was whatever. So I have to mark all that food that I just gave her. Slowly they'll start coming out. Now some of the things that we look for, if you wonder how I know each penguin, um, there's two different ways. One I can tell by pretty much the personality of the penguin, but those bracelets that they have on their flippers, on the right side, if the penguin has a bracelet on their right side, it's a male. If the penguin has a bracelet on the left side, it's a female. I guess the word uh, out didn't get to the people that uh, females are always right, uh, males are left, but that's okay. Come on, Jade. Oh, this is Roxy. Come on, Roxy. And that's a no. So, like I said, we always offer food. Uh, sometimes they want it, sometimes they don't. We offer food at least three times a day. But like I was saying, each penguin... has uh, kind of uh, different colored beads. And those beads are denote certain numbers. And those numbers are what allow us to know who is who. And so when we look at them and we keep track of them, 
we're able to trade these penguins to other facilities. And that just means once that number is to that animal, that number stays with them. So when we think about our colony, we have a subset of the North American colony. And our colony is just one little bit of all the penguins out there of the Magellanic species. So if we need to switch penguins for genetic reasons, we can. And that number stays with them. Well, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'm going to finish up in here, see if anybody wants to, else to come up and uh, partake before I leave. I would like to say thank you all for coming to the aquarium because your admission does help us take care of all of our animals. So for myself and all the penguins, we hope you enjoy your day here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and we hope to see you again real soon.